President. Senator from Georgia. Mr. President, I ask that the quorum call be dispensed with and I be allowed to speak as if in morning business. Without objection. <clears throat> Mr. President, I rise today to speak about a bill that I am introducing today, which is an amendment to the Commodity Exchange Act, and it's titled the End User Protection Act. During the debate on Dodd-Frank a couple of years ago, a constant concern for myself and others in this chamber was how best to protect end users, the individuals and businesses that use futures markets both to purchase commodities and use derivatives to hedge their risk. The legislation that ultimately passed was not what I had desired, but it did specify that end users should not be treated the same as banks, and in many instances should not be subject to the same registration and margin requirements as other market participants. But that simply has not been the case. As the CFTC has gone through the rulemaking process, Mr. President, I've seen many instances where the Commission, in its zeal to finalize rules, has not given due, due consideration to those farmers, ranchers, and other end users who depend on our futures markets to hedge their risks. Time and again, end users brought their concerns to the Commission, and the end user exemption I helped to author were not honored. In other instances, Dodd-Frank created unintended consequences that must be fixed. It's for these reasons that I am introducing the End User Protection Act. As commodities end users have struggled through an increasing burden of reforms that were never designed for them, the effect has been an increase in their cost of doing business, and for some, making the already high risk associated with farming even higher. Mr. President, the bill I am introducing clarifies that unlike banks, true derivative end users are exempt from the margin requirements applied by the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act to many of the derivatives contracts that they enter into. Let me highlight a few of the other reforms that are included in this bill. One of the most egregious abuses by the Commodities Futures Trading Commission has been with their cost-benefit analysis. While the CEA instructed the Commission to weigh the costs and benefits of regulations, it is only recently we have seen misgivings in this process. Throughout the Dodd-Frank rulemaking process, industry participants have relayed concerns about the cost-benefit analysis performed by the CFTC. Commissioners, as well, have vocalized their concerns that the model the CFTC has used is deficient in several areas. For instance, in a letter to the Wall Street Journal in August of 2011, Commissioner Scott O'Malley has stated, and I quote, with respect to our proposed rulemakings, our own Inspector General has called into question the quality of the cost-benefit analysis. Nevertheless, during the course of our final rulemakings, I have continued to see indications that the CFTC intends to persist with a one-size-fits-all qualitative approach. This approach contradicts two recent executive orders from President Obama and justifiably renders our rulemakings vulnerable to legal challenge. We need to be more cognizant of the effects that our rulemakings may have had on the food and energy costs of average Americans. If the CFTC needs to repropose a rulemaking, rulemaking, then so be it. Given the stakes for Main Street and Wall Street, it is more important to get a rulemaking right than to finish it fast." Close quote. As Commissioner O'Malley notes, getting it right is the most important part for the average American, but not, it seems, for the Commission. Even the CFTC's Inspector General detailed insufficient cost-benefit methodology and rulemakings. In some instances, the Commission has even released interpretive guidance in order to subvert the cost-benefit process altogether. President Obama has made clear that he expects a thorough analysis and the Commission should be held to the same standard as other agencies. 
Therefore, my bill amends the Commodities Exchange Act to require real cost-benefit analysis be performed before rulemakings. I am asking for the Commission as a rulemaking body to play fair, to do the right thing, and ensure when they pass a rule they know how it will affect market participants and the industry as a whole first. Mr. President, we know some companies pass risk from their affiliates to one central hedging unit in order to consolidate their combined market risk. Then they hedge that risk with the market. Often the affiliate that houses the central desk is deemed a financial entity and therefore not able to utilize the end user exception to mandatory clearing. Simply put, Mr. President, when one company with multiple units trades with itself, it shouldn't face the same regulatory burden as when it trades in the market. Mr. President, we have also seen instances where transparency has had unintended consequences for some market participants. As their trading data is made available, some savvy market participants have been able to track their trades without even knowing the name of the company. It is important these entities not face a disadvantage in the market, resulting in millions of dollars of additional costs simply because their positions can be identified. This bill fixes that issue and ends that disadvantage. Another reform this bill makes is allowances for utilities volumetric optionality. Many utilities who are purchasers of natural gas for both electricity and home heating often are unable to detail exactly how much demand they will have during a particular time frame. Though they previously were able to utilize contracts that allowed this optionality to determine when and how much electricity they could purchase, these types of contracts are now effectively prohibited. By barring these utilities from being able to employ market strategies to keep costs low and ensure stability, the cost rises not only for the end user company, but for the consumer as well. We should make allowances for this volumetric optionality, and the bill before us does just that. In sum, Mr. President, this bill clarifies the existing end user exemption that the Congress provided during the Dodd-Frank debate. Further, it ensures that market participants who do not pose systemic risks and use our futures markets to decrease their cost of business and increase their efficiencies are able to continue those practices, ultimately to the benefit of the consumer. Thank you, Mr. President, and I see my friend Mr. Whitehouse is here, and I will yield the floor.